Hello there, it's Graciela here. In today's video, we're going to learn how to upload files to SharePoint using Power Automate for desktop. There are two ways to achieve this, and the approach that is recommended will depend if you have a premium account or not. If you have a Power Automate premium account or a trial enabled, you will see these options and you will notice there is a SharePoint option there. But if you don't have a premium account, then we will have to use this file option available at the top. For this use case, we are going to be working with this link. Once we go to this link, a PDF is downloaded and that is downloaded into our downloads folder. As you can see here, it's important to note that I have set up my Firefox to download PDF files instead of showing them and also to download the files directly into this folder without asking me. If you want to know further information about how to download files from the web using Power Automate, we have a video on that. So we're going to leave it in the description of the video so you can have a look. So for this video, we're going to focus just on the SharePoint part. So let's open Power Automate and I already created a new flow. And what we're going to do is I will just start an instance of a browser and I will ask Power Automate to go to this link and that will automatically save my file. So while it saves, I'm just going to wait uh, because it takes like a couple of seconds for my file to be there. So I'm going to wait three seconds. And then finally, I am going to close the browser and this will take care of downloading my file. We also need to access the most recent file. There are different ways in which we can do this. We know that the name of the file might be different. So for example, if I download the same file again, it will just add a parenthesis and a one at the end. So we don't always know what's going to be the name of the file. We just know it's going to be located under the downloads folder. So what I'm going to do to extract where my file is, is I'm just going to get the most recent file that is available in the downloads folder because the most recent file is the file that I just downloaded. So what I'm going to do is I will use this folder option and I'm going to use the get files in folder option. So here I will select my download folders, then hit OK. And then I'm going to say that I want to filter by PDF because I know that my file will always be in this format. Then really important to click on the advanced options and then sort by creation time. And we need to also select uh, the descending option because we want the most recent at the top. Then let's hit on save and what the and what this action will do is it will go to our downloads folder and store the list of files that it has found in this files variable. So um, the way that we can see which information these files variable is bringing is I'm gonna add this for each really quick and I will just select that I want to see my files and that each file will be stored in this current item variable. So then I hit on save and for now I'm going to use a set variable option. And when I do that, I can click on my variable selector and I open the current item. You can see that current item has a lot of different attributes. The attribute we are interested in is the one that is called dot full name because that's the one that brings the full path plus the file name that we want to work with. So I'm going to just click on this and for now I'm just going to hit save. We are not going to be using this step five, six and seven. I just created them so I can see what's the name of the attribute that I'm interested in. Now that we know that the list of files is here, we are going to start working on how to upload to SharePoint with a premium account. So to do that, uh, we know that SharePoint works with binary formats. If I open the SharePoint options, I'm going to see this option that is called create file. You're going to see that the first thing it's going to do is going to get my connection references. If I have never used SharePoint from Power Automate Desktop, this is going to show me an error and I will have just to click on connection references and then just add a new connection reference. In this case, I already tested this scenario, so I already have SharePoint connected, so it recognizes everything. And here we see this, the very same options that we would see from Power Automate Cloud. We see which site address we want to save on, we see what's the folder path, we see what's the file name, and we also have what's the file content. 
However, this file content expect the, expects the content to be in binary format. So we need to first transform our file that we just downloaded into binary and then send it to SharePoint. So let's just search for the binary option in the search bar in Power Automate. And let's drop this option here into the binary, into the canvas. The way this action works is that it expects you to just select what's the file that you want to convert to binary. You can see here that I just selected it using the file selector and it just shows the whole uh, path in which my file is saved. So what we need to do instead of hard coding this file name in the folder, we want to get it from the files list that we got in number four. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the variable selector and then I'm going to select files. When I select files, this is selecting all the list. And remember that we are interested in just the first element. So to do that, we just write those two square brackets and then we write a zero. Once we write that, we have obtained access to just the first element instead of the whole list. So then I'm just going to write a dot and remember what's the name of the attribute we are interested in because that's the one that has the full path plus the full name is this one called full name. So I will just write full name here and then I can click on save. And after I have done this, I really can delete these three steps because the, we only added these three to see what are the attributes that we need to work with. So I'm going to delete it and then I will go ahead and just add my SharePoint action. Once I add my SharePoint action, I can just click on create file and this is going to recognize my SharePoint sites that I have, that I have access to. I'm going to select this one and then it's going to ask me where do I want to save it. And then we are going to assign a file name. In this case, we're just going to save it as a file from, from for Automate Desktop and the file content just needs to be mapped to binary data, which is the one that we just created. And then we hit on save and now let's test our whole workflow. So now it has uh, entered to download our files. We can see that it downloaded it with the number two and then it accessed the file, it converted it to binary and now it's supposed to be in SharePoint. So let's open SharePoint and let's save this. And you can see that now we have this file from Power Automate Desktop here and it was just uploaded a couple of seconds ago. And that's how we can upload files to SharePoint if we have a Power Automate premium license. Now, before moving to the next option, let's have a look at these files variable. And you can see here that the most recent file was brought over. It, it's the one that has the number two. And if you click on more, this is another way in which you can see what's the name of the file. So you can see that full name has the full path and dot name just has the uh, actual name. So if you wanted to bring everything to just bring the same name from the download to SharePoint, we would just need to uh, change this file from pad to just um, file zero and then dot name. And if we execute it, then it should just add a new file with the name that we just uh, have from our files downloaded. And if I go to SharePoint, you're gonna see it's gonna be there. And here it is, it's the most recent file that we downloaded and now it's available here. So now let's move into the second option, which is if you don't have this premium account. For now, I am going to disable these two options because those are for the uh, trial or the premium account. And what we need to do is to sync our SharePoint folder into our local computer because we don't have a premium license so we can't access the cloud, at least from here. What we can do instead is just syncing this SharePoint folder to our local files. And uh, what will what that will do, it will just prompt you to sign in and then you can sign in. And once you sync the files, you're going to see that this folder is going to show up on this side of the screen. And anything that I put into this local folder in a couple of seconds will be just synced back to the cloud. So we are going to be taking advantage of this syncing to just move our files inside 
or local computer and this will automatically push the files to the cloud. Please note that there's also an option to use the SharePoint API or the Graph API using this option that is called HTTP. However, that is a little bit more difficult compared to other options because this will require some additional knowledge on APIs. So we're going to be focusing on the other option that takes advantage of the sync options. We're going to get what's the most recent file and then we're just going to move it to our local folder that is synced to SharePoint and then we are going to just let OneDrive do its thing uh, and then the files will be just showing up in SharePoint. So what we're going to do, we're going to keep this same step because we always need to get the latest file. So now that we have the latest file, we just need to use this option that is called move file or files. So I'm just going to select it and put it here. And what we're going to do, it's the same thing. We are going to select the files and then we are going to select the most recent item, which we know is item zero. And then we are going to select full name. And then it will ask me what's, what's my destination folder. My destination folder in this case will be the folder that is linked to SharePoint. For now, I am going to select uh, for now just any folder. And then I will go to my SharePoint folder and I will open one of my folders and I will just put it here. And that way we know that this folder is synced to SharePoint. So everything that we upload here, it's going to be uploaded as well to SharePoint. And finally, we just need to select what do we want to happen if the file exists or not. In this case, I'm just going to overwrite it and then hit on save. And now we're going to run it and we're going to see how it downloads the file, how it saved it into our default folder and then how it's moved back to SharePoint and then to the SharePoint folder that we have in our uh, local computer and how that will push to the cloud. Now, if I go, it seems like it finished. If I go here, you can see that the most recent file was moved and this automatically moves the file with the uh, name that we had and you can see now it's syncing. And in a, in a moment, the file should be just uploaded to SharePoint. Yep, now you see it synced and now you see it's here as well. And that's it. That's how you move files to SharePoint from Power Automate Desktop, depending on the type of license that you have. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.